Well, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, welcome to another edition of the Savior's Cross broadcast. Uh, welcome, welcome. My name's Pastor Jeff Williams uh, from Spirit of Life Church here in Gastonia, North Carolina. Uh, and I have with me tonight Brother Walt Ledford and Brother Scott Sherrill. I appreciate these men uh, being with us tonight. And uh, we're going to pick up where we left off last week uh, and look uh, at the church at Corinth. Uh, this has sort of been a, some introductory remarks and introductory uh, verses in chapter 1 uh, concerning the church at Corinth. And there's many, many things that uh, we can learn by studying God's Word. And uh, we um, are emphasizing here or, or attempting to emphasize in our study here uh, on the Savior's Cross broadcast uh, to emphasize the finished work uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, what He accomplished and, and how what He accomplished affects our life, not only in our eternal sense, but the everyday sense. So we're going to start out uh, looking at uh, chapter 1, picking back up, <coughs> excuse me, picking back up at chapter 1, starting at verse 26, and uh, I'm going to be reading uh, out of the Expositor Study Bible, uh, and we're going to read down through verse number 31, 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, and uh, let's just see what the Lord will do. Uh, Brother Scott, if you want to start out. Yes, sir. For you see your calling, brethren. This refers to the nature and method of their heavenly calling. How that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Uh, are called and accept. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. The expositor's note says the preaching of the cross confounds the wise because it falls out to change lives which nothing man has can do. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are not <coughs> mighty. Excuse me. Uh, the cross is looked at as weakness, but it brings about great strength and power regarding those who accept the finished work of Christ. And base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen. It is God working in the base things and the despised things which brings about miraculous things. Yes, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. God can use that which is nothing when it, within itself, but with Him all things become possible. That no flesh means human effort should glory in His presence, but of Him are you in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> pertains to this great plan of God, which is far beyond all wisdom of the world. We are, quote, in Christ Jesus, unquote, by the virtue of the cross and what he did there. Who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. We have all of this by the Holy Spirit through Christ and what he did at the cross. This means that the cross must must ever be the object of our faith. That, according as it is written, <clears throat> Jeremiah 9, 23, He who glories, let him glory in the Lord. He who boasts, let him boast in the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we want to, uh, I don't know if, uh, maybe we should have done a little more introduction. That was my fault if we didn't, but we're dealing uh, here in this section of Scripture on the subject of wisdom. And uh, in the, the last uh, broadcast that we had, we were looking at the wisdom of God versus the wisdom of men. And Paul is making uh, the argument here, uh, even though uh, in Corinth they were um, great philosophers, they were uh, Greeks, uh, they were just different uh, nationalities, if you will. Some of those uh, people were... Uh, fans of the great philosophers of that time. Uh, they were great fans of human wisdom, human intellect, the great teachers and the great universities of that time. Uh, they were also 
uh, fans per se of the great religious institution at that time, which was Judaism, uh, the Sanhedrin, uh, the high priest and uh, what have you that uh, boasted uh, in the law, boasted in the higher learning of the law. And uh, Paul is basically making an argument that the wisdom of men has nothing to do with redemption. The wisdom of man has nothing to do with your salvation. Uh, with that being said, it would be a good time to, to inject that the wisdom of man has nothing to do with your daily walk in Christ Jesus. If you know him and you're saved, uh, it is truly, uh, thoroughly uh, in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ that we are what we are because the scripture says in him we live and have our being. So this picks up in verse number 26, and I'm going to ask the brethren uh, to just jump right in, and let's start, start all over. We see here in verse 26, it says, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Brother Scott, I'm going to ask you to start out for us. Okay, well, you know, uh, we, we were uh, reading the last couple of weeks about their wisdom and there's divisions and mm -hmm. everybody thought they were smart. And I, mm -hmm. I, first thing that hit me when I seen this, is Paul was saying, you know, you need to stop and think about who you are and where you are. God didn't get a bargain when he called you. you That's know? right. I mean, they had, one was realizing who they was. Right, right. But, and also, as you're looking, he says, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Uh, <clears throat> we're not called according to our talent or, what you know, uh, God, God don't look at it. That's a good speech, uh, uh, you know, speech writer. He'd be a great preacher. No, he, right. he does his own thing. I, it made me think of Gideon. Right. You know, that great army down to 300. God shows his self. It makes his presence known uh, with Gideon, somebody, a small army. It wasn't just, it, when God reveals himself, it's not just to the lost, it's even to the one that's yielding himself. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is through I, I, myself, I'm I, I, I never going to be a doctor or a lawyer or somebody important. <coughs> had nothing. Mm -hmm. So when I felt like the things that God is, uh, is using, uh, me to do lets me realize and see it's God and and of course there's other people that, you know it's kind of like the burning bush they uh, Moses saw just a bush there's plenty of bushes out there but there's something different about that one right it had the fire of God on it you Amen. Know? and what I'm saying is uh, we're you know in any time period people's uh, looking at kings or queens or you know uh, uh, having a, a have an awe towards them and all that. Right. To see somebody that nobody would pay attention to mm -hmm. and God speak, you know, I, I, it, to me it makes makes it more clear that, that God's uh, doing something. It's, it's not our ways, it's His ways. Right. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Brother Walt, any comment? You know, when, when I was looking at this verse, you know, I, I was... Uh, it just came to my mind about, you know, when Jesus called his disciples, they they was they wasn't in any kind of leadership or they didn't rule anything. They wasn't, you know, popular or wealthy. They were just common, ordinary men. And you know, really, when when I looked at that, you know, that that really should uh just I mean bless bless our heart so much that we as ordinary men and uh, Jesus would call us before he would, you know, all these, uh, uh, you know, people that got the high standards of the world. Right. Yeah. But it's the, it, it's, it's the lowly people, <clears throat> the humble people. Right. Those are the ones that, that Jesus seek, seeks out. Amen. Amen. I, I, as I, as I like you men, was looking at this, um, and I wanted to say this, that you see the word calling uh, or the word called many, uh, several times in this passage, and it's not at all alluding to predestination as, as some might think or some might infer. 
Uh, but what Paul is saying here, and he says foresee or consider, he's telling these uh, believers at Corinth, he said, consider your calling, brethren. Notice the, the instrument in which the Lord not only used to bring you the gospel, us in our lowly position, and um, no, God not only used the lowly to bring the gospel to you, but he's also bringing the gospel to you uh, as, as ordinary men, ordinary men and women. He was saying he, 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 uh, God did not use the great orators um, of the world at that time. And they were putting their confidence in uh, some of them in the, in the well speakers. And uh, there's nothing wrong with speaking correctly. As a matter of fact, I pray that the Lord will continue to change some of my uh, vernacular, that I would speak more correctly. But, but the great orators of the world, uh, people followed uh, like Plato and, and, and these great men. Uh, Paul, Paul said, no, uh, um, not how that not many wise after the flesh, uh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Um, I wanted to give this uh, couple, couple uh, notes I wrote down here, gentlemen. Uh, during that time, uh, the Sanhedrin uh, in Acts chapter 4, verse 13, the, the, the Sanhedrin looked down on the apostles. The religious people uh, of that time, the, the religious hierarchy of that people they, of that time, they looked at the apostles as unlearned and ignorant men. And uh, God uses, God uses the exact opposite of what you and I th would think. Amen. And uh, Augustine said this, Walt, I think about what you just said. This is what Augustine wrote years and years ago. And I like this. God caught orators by fishermen, not fishermen by orators. Amen. God used a, God used Amen. Peter and those that were that were mending their nets, and he said, "Come follow me." He didn't seek out the Plato's and the philosophers of the world. He sought out what we'll look at in just a moment as the base things or the lowly things. Yeah. Uh, as I was doing my study in Hebrews, it it talks about how uh, uh, it says uh, the I get here, heroes of faith. Uh, some wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. They 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 were nobodies mm -hmm. that God chose, and. Uh, you think about uh, uh, David when he was a shepherd. All of Israel, his brothers, was out there with all these, you know, different weapons of war, mm -hmm. using their wisdom. How can we defeat Goliath? Uh, even even Saul offered offered David his armor. Good point. And, 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 and Good point. The, the only way the only way it worked is a little humble shepherd, shepherd boy uh, defeated him. By faith, that's right. Trust in God, and I think when you look at it, I've heard it said before, Lord, I have nothing, but I offer, I offer myself to you. That's all you know they want. Sense? Yeah, uh, there's nothing in, in in my way to keep me from relying on faith. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody who's got tied into the world. Uh, uh, Matthew 13 talks about you know the uh, the sower. Mm -hmm. he, he laid seed on the on the hardened ground. Mm -hmm. See, they're setting their ways. You can't. They're not going to listen. You know, they 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 set the way they want to do things. And then uh, talked about uh, choked up. Uh, uh, some 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 of the uh, seed when it grew, it got choked up. Uh, it get entangled. You know, with the wisdom of this world. Mm -hmm. You know, to where they're like the Pharisees. They they couldn't hear. They right. couldn't hear the faith. Right. They couldn't understand. Right. Because they they've got uh, pulled into this world. But I, I, I think God's wisdom is so much higher because He said, you know, where we think, well, that person's got a talent for this. That He says, I want somebody don't have nothing because this all comes down to faith. That's right. Relying on Him, it, you know, it's like 
somebody you know, on a building trying to hang on to a rope or something, you reach in your hand, grab my hand, you're going to have to let go of that. Right. And God needs somebody that's going to let go and let God. Amen. You know, nothing in the way. Amen. And a lot so, of us start so, to say, um, <laughs> so, gentlemen, let me let me just throw this in here just to 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 continue to cultivate the conversation. So, so there's nothing. And what, what the scripture is saying and what you are boostering is that there is no, absolutely no logical thought in my mind that could get me to God or within my own flesh, within my own status, within my own willpower, uh, even though I would might consider myself a fairly smart guy, are you saying... That that, in God's economy, what I can offer absolutely means nothing. Yeah. Would you would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah it just it's worthless. That's right. It's worthless. <laughs> it's worthless. That, it's, yeah. worthless. it's worthless. Yeah. I, I wrote I wrote some some another uh, quote down, gentlemen, from uh, the commentator uh, George Williams. Uh, and this is what he said concerning this, this verse, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. He said this, quote, The thought of God using poor men to save poor men is a demonstration of God's judgment of man's assumed importance. And I thought, man, uh, we do we do think more of ourselves in the intellectual sense, uh, in the logical sense. Um, and God give us intellect, God give us logic, but it just don't work in the spirit world. It don't work. Uh, it doesn't work. It, it spiritual things are given from from the spirit realm. As a matter of fact, Matthew chapter 16, verse 17, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood, listen to this, flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And uh, God uses the, low, the lowly of the lowly to reveal the most glorious news known to mankind. Amen. Any other comments on that verse? All right. Verse 27. And there's still so much more. And um, I want to I want to be sure and 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 keep on task here. And Paul is uh, not only defending God and 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 the things of God and the Spirit, but mainly God is defending the cross here. Uh, and Paul is defending the cross here. Uh, Paul, and see, in the, in the eyes of the world, men, think about this. In the eyes of the world, um, it, it's a, it, we are a laughing stock in the eyes of the world to those that, that would say, you mean to tell me you believe that this man, Jesus, that died or was crucified on, a, on two uh, planks or boards or, or this cross that you talk about all the time. So you actually expect us to believe and take into consideration that it was through that act that all of humanity and all of redemption has the opportunity to be rescued. But see, in the eyes of the world, in the eyes of the, or the wisdom of the world, that's foolishness. That's foolishness. But the, but the Bible says, in the eyes of the world, it is foolish, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. But God hath chosen, this is verse 27, and we're by no means exhausting this. Um, a, lot, a lot could be said. Um, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. What say you, brother, on that? Uh, well, you think about when uh, uh, the, the apostles or disciples, when they were before them, Pharisees and Acts, they, 
Like I said, they saw that they was unlearned, but they knew they had been with Jesus. That's right. Wouldn't that be a testimony yeah. to be able to say? Yes. That people look at you and say, they've been with Jesus. Absolutely. You know? Uh, so, uh, yeah, God takes the foolish things of this world. Uh, as, I, as I look, um, I noticed... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Jesus would speak to him in parables mm -hmm. and he said, you know, and he explained to him, you know, they asked why and he talked about uh, the Pharisees say, I speak to them in parables because they see and see not and hear and they hear not, neither do they understand. Uh, uh, so the uh, prophecy of Isaiah, Isaiah is fulfilled which saith, by hearing you shall hear and, now, and, not sh and shall not understand and seeing you shall not see and shall not perceive because the people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Uh, the the people, that, it's funny the way it said, the foolish things of this world, but what it is, they looking at what we do is foolish, but it's because they've loved their sins so much and they've rejected God that everything's dull. Inside, their hearts dull, their eyes are dull, their ears are dull. Dull of hearing, that they can't yes. hear, that they can't, uh, can't hear. But uh, and as I, I was looking at this in Exodus twenty, God actually spoke to His people, and they said, "We don't want to hear no more. We're so scared we're going to die." Moses, you talk to God, and we'll do what you say, and we won't sin. Whatever He says. But mm -hmm. of course, as soon as He went up the mountain, they sinned. Right. And you know. Uh, People want to push God away, mm -hmm. and if they can push Him far enough, they can do what they want to come. That's right. You know. That's right. And 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 it's just amazing that God can take somebody, and and just uh, reveal Himself. But uh, I guess uh, looking at testimony, uh, when I was, I just I'd been out of church for so long and away from God, and I was working at Walmart part time. And this woman come in with her husband and two kids. And I, I was just putting up, I was working in the automobile, I was putting oil up and just minding my own business. And I heard somebody, you know, clear her throat. And I turned around and it's lady, she said, she said, son, you can look at, you can ask my husband and my girls right here, but they'll tell you, I don't do this uh, unless God told me to. <laughs> when she said that, I already got tingled all yeah. over. She said, but God said, he ain't done with you yet. And I was trying my best not, my eyes was watering right there. I mean, it'd been year, it'd been 10 years at least before I, I stepped into a church. She said, God is not done with you yet. Amen. The foolish things. That's you know right. That's now, right. Anybody standing there, a customer listening. Would have thought, thought she was foolish. Yeah. yeah absolutely. To me, into my heart, see, it, it was faith to faith. Yeah. The, the deep calling to the deep. That's of right. God. Amen. And when I look at this, you know, I think about that. It's... It's what where you got to show up where you least expect That's right. them, you know. Amen. Like Moses with that <laughs> that bush. I mean, where you least expect it, and and the light, the It'll light of the on. gospel. Amen. You know, and it, it shine. It, it it reflected. She 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 was shining God, being a light, just like that bush was. She was representing Christ, and it was touching me. And did I change that day? No, no, I didn't go back to church that next week. But you know what? It lingered with me. Oh, it yeah. was eternal words. And yeah. it stayed with me yep. until the time that God said, okay, now he's ready. <coughs> and I went through a time when I become broken, and now I was ready, and I was crying out to God. You know? Amen. But but that, you know, that I, that's what I think. Uh, when I see that, I think of what uh, them Pharisees saw when they saw Jesus. You know, yeah. there's something... And you, yeah. you know, think about this, Brother Scott, and Walt, I want you to comment next. Um, think about all of the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of men that you've heard during your life and forgot. Yes. But that word mm -hmm. has stuck with you all of these years. Yes. Because it was not the wisdom of the world. Mm -hmm. It was the wisdom that comes from God. And the wisdom that God gives won't leave. Mm -hmm. The wisdom or the word of God, the word, what the word gives, the wisdom of God, it won't leave. Mm -hmm. Amen. Walt, what are you thinking? You know, well, <laughs> you know, I was just talking about the world, you know. The world is so deceived. 
about, you know, yeah. Jesus Christ. And and there's so many out there that, you know, said, you know, I believe in God, I'm okay. But God says, you know, for God so loved the world right. that he gave his only <laughs> begotten son that whosoever believes upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. So, uh, uh, so just believing in God without and, and denying what Jesus did on right. the, on, on the cross exactly is not it, it's not going to work. That's right. It won't. It, it, you, you cannot get to heaven that way. That's right. For you know Jesus is plain on that. See, I'm 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 the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Amen. There's, there's only one way. And that's and that's Jesus' uh, crucified, finished work on the cross. That's, Amen. That's, that's Amen. the only way. That, that that is so true, Brother Walt. We we even we see here in the in some of the preceding verses. One verse we majored on last week was verse number twenty three, and Paul said, "But we preach Christ crucified." That's the message. That is the that that is the message. That is the wisdom. He says, he says, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block. Now here we go, unto the Greeks, or the higher learning is foolishness. Uh, but unto them who are called both Jews and Greek, both Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, verse number 24. And I think you 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 really bring it back into focus. Uh, Brother Walt, by uh, uh, making the mention of the exclusiveness of the finished work of Christ. Um, and even in the church world today, uh, I, we, we must, we must never, never, even in our so-called wisdom, we must never leave the finished work of Calvary as for our access point. See, Jesus, and, and we've said this many times on this broadcast, Jesus is, you just said, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the source of all things that we get from God. I mean, it, the, the Word of God, this is not a mantra or some ministry saying. The Word of God proves out, it lays out that Jesus Christ is the source of everything that you and I will ever need. With Jesus being the source, we must also look at the means by, by the, the way we get these things. And it, is, it was by Jesus giving his life on Calvary. Jesus Amen. is the source. The cross is the means. Amen. And we see, we see uh, in, in the world, we see um, uh, the, um, the, the, the plight of man and the shape that, that our society's in. We see this shape and we see the downward spiral uh, that uh, society and humanity uh, is, is going. And we're all witnesses of it, uh, us sitting here in the, at this desk. I mean, we could say, my, 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 what have we have seen change even within the last 20 years and or even the last five years, how uh, it seems that society is, is spiraling down um, the, the hatred toward uh, mankind, the crime, um, the, the drug abuse. Um, it, it's everything's rising. Um, crime is, is out of control. It's completely out of control. Um, and you, you don't believe, if you don't believe crime is out of control, see if you can get Walmart to tell you the truth. Walmart and 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 from I've talked to cashiers and <laughs> I hope this is all right but I've talked to cashiers and I know y'all probably seen this they have people that will literally go in and there's no shame before their eyes they'll literally literally go in fill up a buggy and just stroll out yep. I mean hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars um, that is pulled uh, out of our economy and funneled into the drug uh, trade. And I'm not trying to get off on that. I'm trying to make a point. And, and we, we see that our government, our government uh, has tried to use psychology. Our government has tried to use psychiatrists. 
Our government tries to use social programs. Our government tries to use rehab. Our government tries to, to use money, throw money at the problem and it'll go away. All of these things have failed. And then the church, the church throws at the problem a works-based religion. A, we, we throw works of the flesh and we throw works of our own ingenuity to try to deal with humanity and even build the church. The, the, the word of God says here in no uncertain terms that the cross of Christ is the answer to every problem that is derogatory toward humanity. It does not matter what it is. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. And he is life for all mankind. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All of this, all of this really and truly, gentlemen, that, that the Apostle Paul is saying here, uh, everything that man comes up with, the wisdom of man, is laid waste at the cross. It's all laid waste. Man's ideas, man's ways, my ways. God says my ways are higher than your ways. All of this, all of the wisdom of the world is laid waste at the cross. And if humanity would, 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 would grab a hold of Calvary in belief and faith, as Brother Scott has said, if, if we would just grab a hold of it in simple faith and believing, even whatever the problem is, you may say, well, preacher, that's, that's all well and good for my salvation, but I'm in a mess right now, and I'm saved, but I'm in a mess. Things are going wrong. Things are, things are going bad. Listen, the same thing that dealt with your salvation is the same thing that deals with your daily life. Right. The same thing that we need on a day-to-day -day basis. When we came to the Lord Jesus Christ on day one, on the day of our born-again experience, we, ex we expressed faith in Jesus Christ and Him dying, Him being the Lamb that was slain before the foundation. We express faith in that. Well, you don't leave that. You never leave it. And I had to learn that, uh, folks. I had to learn that uh, the hard way. That you, when you leave the cross, when you leave the cross and you leave God's wisdom and you begin to encroach on your own wisdom or another man's wisdom, it's, it's going to be a bad, bad day. That's why Paul is saying, listen, the cross of Christ is the wisdom of God. And we'll see that in just a few moments. Praise the Lord. Any other comments on uh, verse 27? What, what you just got through saying, Pastor, uh, uh, you know, uh, we're saved by grace. Yes, sir. Through faith. Our, our faith in, yes. in the Lord Jesus Christ, the crucified Christ. And, this, and, and by that grace that we're saved, that's the same grace that heals us. That's right. And our answer is... Uh, our, putting our faith in, in Jesus and, and the cross to be healed. Yes. Physically, mentally, spiritually. That's right. That's it. That's right. That's right. Uh, brother uh, uh, Lauren Larson, uh, one of my professors of online uh, classes I'm taking right now, uh, spoke of the salvation experience, grace and faith. He, he spoke of this grace, which is unmerited favor to undeserving people. Uh, as holistic. In other words, he, he put it forth as that your salvation experience, i.e. the cross, the finished work, does not stop the day you were saved. God does not save us and leave us to go off on our own ingenuity or our own wisdom. That, to, that, that is contradictive to... Um, to the, even the word salvation or even the word saved. When you are saved, you are saved from not only the penalty of sin, and I love this. I love this. I didn't know this for a long time, Brother Walt. I was trying to live for God via my own wisdom. But the Word of God plainly states that the Lord Jesus Christ not only took care of the penalty of sin, He took care of the power of sin. And sin does not have to dominate my life. 
I do not have to figure out how to live for God. I do not have to live for God by my own intellect, which (laughs) falls very, very short. But I live for God based on who he is and what he did for me. That's God's wisdom. Amen. Some people could say, might say, well, that don't make sense. That you, that, is that all you do? Is, is that all you have to do? Let me tell you something. Try placing your faith in the Lord Jesus and his finished work on a consistent daily basis. You'll see it's not as easy as it sounds. That's why the Apostle Paul said to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. Brother Scott, you have anything you want to add? Uh, no, I think we're ready for the next verse. Okay. Okay. Um, And verse number 28, (coughs) excuse me, Paul would go on in his conversation and he would say, and and base or insignificant and base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Brother Scott, what do you... Of course, reading that, the first thing that came to my mind was surprised. I was thinking of John the Baptist coming out with uh, in camel's hair, eating <laughs> locusts, wild honey. I mean, uh, you think about it. Uh, uh, Jesus was talking, uh, uh, speaking to him about it. Said, uh, "What we get out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken within the wind. Mm-hmm. Uh, ever win a doctrine or whatever?" But he said, uh, "You went to see a man clothed in soft raiment. Behold." They that wear soft clothing are king's houses. They weren't going to see some uh, preacher was saying, hey, look at me. Look how, how, you know, you could be successful like me. Right, you know, right, right. right. Uh, the, any of them wore animal skins for poor. Right. Because, you know, it, it, took, it, was, it was expensive to have cloth. Absolutely, you know? yes. So uh, here you are, uh, somebody poor, and, and, like, and like I say, uh, somebody that's poor don't have anything, God loves a clean chalkboard. Amen. You know where you start with it. Amen. But, uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> see, where was that there? Uh, <coughs> Brother Scott, while you're looking yeah. there, that reminds me, you know, concerning the wisdom of God. Uh, there's a lot of folks out there uh, that have had failure uh, in their Christian walk. Yeah. Uh, they've had failure in their life. And uh, I dare say most have. Uh, if not all, in one way or the other. Uh, but man's wisdom, man's wisdom writes, writes them off. Man's wisdom said he failed, or he failed, she failed, she, she failed, uh, vice versa, and, and they're no longer, they're no longer um, qualified, they're no longer fit for the kingdom of God. And that, that, is, that is really the wisdom uh, of religion. And there is, a, there is a spirit of religion that is rampant out there. Um, the cross, the cross uh, cries, the, the cross cries out restoration. Yes. Where, the, where the flesh cries out for retribution. And um, many, many in the church world today, and some may say, well, you're making statements like you know it all. I don't. I certainly don't know it all. But I know, I know one thing. I know that, that my Lord addressed everything that I would ever face at Calvary, mm-hmm. even, even in a failure, uh, even in someone else's failure, Christ addressed that. And to understand Calvary, to understand Calvary and then and then to write someone off because they have failed or because they have committed a sin and and uh, you know uh, brethren that's where some of our uh, some of our denominations they 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 pick up the idea that if somebody has a failure or falls into sin or 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 trips up whatever the case that they need to get saved again. I've I've heard doctrines built on that. And and to see Calvary and to, and to understand what justification by faith means and and even the issue of sanctification by faith, the progressive sanctification that that man uh, that loves the Lord Jesus and and has called upon the Lord that God will take um, a man and use him. And, and what I'm trying to say, 
um, that I've went a long way around the block saying is that uh, God takes the foolish things of the world like he could never be used again. Well, you, you be careful, be very careful how you place someone in the grave because they failed. Be very, very careful with your mouth um, how we accuse someone uh, because in your, that is your wisdom. Mm -hmm. That's your wisdom. That's not the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God said, my son died for him. My son died for her. And if the very moment, the very moment that my child fell into a, to a problem or sin, the very moment they fell into sin and the, and the very moment after, even the moment after, Whatever the case, the moment that they place their eyes upon me, the moment they look toward Calvary's cross, mercy stepped in. Mercy will step in and take their case. And what God will do, he will take the base things, uh, the insignificant things. He will take the, 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 the clay pots, so to speak, that the world throws away. He will take them. And he will gather the pieces back together and he will put them back on the potter's wheel. Why? Because of Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary. It is, it is foolishness to the world. But man, I am glad that God is wiser than me. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think of Moses, a hot-headed murderer. Yep. When he went out to a meeting right there in that desert, Everybody thought that's the end of him. Mm -hmm. God wasn't going to do nothing. But, you know, in Hebrews it says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Yeah. For he had respect unto the recompense of his reward. Right. Uh, when I think about like John the Baptist out there, uh, when, you, when you take intellect and charisma out, of the equation, then then God can be known. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a politician that can't be bought. Uh, John the Baptist. I mean, even even the Pharisees would come out to, to hear his words. He was despised, but they wanted to hear. The people wanted to hear him when he come. And what a man of God! He had all these followers, but he told them. Said, he pointed and said, "Behold, the Lamb of God." Uh, that's it takes right. away the sins of the world. He pointed to Jesus, not me. Them Pharisees wasn't that. They would say, yeah, there's God, but there's me too. Don't forget us. You know? That's right. But, but That's right. John went that way. That's right. He had a crowd drawn up, and he said, there, there's the man you're supposed to follow. Amen. You know, Amen. He decreased. But, uh, yeah, he said yeah. he wasn't worthy to unloose the, in layman's terms, he, he said, I'm not worthy to untie his shoestrings. Yes. That's what he said. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Walt, you have anything? I believe y'all covered it. Okay, oh, amen. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. There is so much here uh, to, to cover. Uh, and it did, uh, again, verse 28, it did say, and base, which the word base um, in the uh, Greek language implies, has the, carries the idea of insignificant. And it says, and insignificant things of the world and things which are despised. Wow. Things which are despised are the things that God uses. I sure am glad, men. Amen. I sure am glad God uses the things that are despised. Praise the Lord. Uh, hath God chosen, yea, the things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are. Praise the Lord. Then here, here Paul has a, begins a summary in verse 29. He begins to wrap the thought up. He's the reason, the reason is the argument uh, that no flesh, no flesh should glory in his presence. This carries the idea, the idea of flesh means human effort. Human effort cannot and will not glory laid up against the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you know, uh, you think of David, Joseph, Daniel, they were successful because they listened to the voice of God. And in their afflictions, Daniel in the lion's den, and nothing happened to them. All he did was stand there, and God got the glory. Yeah. They, they knew right. something. You know, God does things with people who are nobodies. 
it, it to get people's attention. Right. You know, to say, okay, there's something going on there. You know. Yes. And uh, <coughs> he said he brought things at what there was as not. You take somebody that don't it, it don't have nothing. I mean, the 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 whole world was framed. You know, we know by faith, by believing the word of God, that right. the, the world was come from nothing. Scientists think you got to have something to make something, but we know that God God took nothing and created the world well, yes. with our own lives. He took nothing, you know, to make 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 what <clears throat> what the calling He wanted in our lives, you know. And I look. I look at the cross and you think if there's pre, if you're gonna look at predestination, he predestined Christ and the cross, predestined the plan of salvation. That's right. And to set up, and, 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 I, and I'm starting to get to understand not just our salvation, but all things, all things. peace of mind, all things, or healing, mm -hmm. uh, every every uh, tribulation would go through the endurance to get through it. Right. I mean, you know, if the tree of life, you could name each fruit, there'd be endurance and, and patience and, 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 and just just God, uh, His love for us. Every, everything was planned out for our own. For, we don't have to do nothing. <laughs> That's right. You know, that it's already been took care of for us. Amen, amen. Walt, you have any comment on that? You know, <clears throat> just to share a, a, a thought with you, I, I thought it was good uh, a couple of weeks ago I heard uh, David Jeremiah when uh, you talk about the flesh here, the word flesh here, mm -hmm. if you take H off of it, which stands for him, mm -hmm. and then you spell that backwards, you get self. 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 Yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> and you got to deny self, pick up the cross, and follow him. Yes. Amen, amen. It, um, uh, gentlemen, you, and uh, referring back to the comment that, that you made, uh, Brother Scott, that you're learning uh, concerning the finished work of Christ, even in our daily walk. Right, yes. And yes. Uh, that is a challenge uh, to depend on the finished work of Christ. It's a challenge to depend on something that happened over 2,000 years ago that would be, that it becomes relevant to my daily walk today. It's, it is a challenge, but we, we also realize that that uh, we believe that 2,000 years ago, Christ died for our sins uh, and Christ died for the sin problem. And uh, so it is a challenge uh, to believe in uh, the cross and believe in, uh, and I'm talking about for daily living. I'm talking about for all situations. Uh, we're gonna see, we're gonna see probably next week, uh, the apostle Paul, um, so, some would even say you're concentrating, you're, you're concentrating, brother Jeff, too much on on the cross. You're concentrating too much on Calvary. God is a big God, and he, it's a broader thing, the things of God. Well, Paul says in the next chapter, uh, the second chapter, verse two, Paul said, "For I determined." Now that's the challenge. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge. He said, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. That, I mean, we can boast in that. We can, uh, we can say that's my life verse. I'm determined, for I have determined, I am determined to know nothing. Listen, um, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Uh, but that does not negate the fact that um, the cross of Christ addressed everything. The cross answers every question. This is something we need. To, it's not the wisdom of man. It's not the wisdom of, it's sure not the wisdom of Washington. If you really want to make God look good, the wisdom of God, just look at Washington. The whole world looks at Washington and really the whole world is looking at us now certainly not in the light of wisdom. They, there's such a mess going on in our government right now. It's chaos. And, there, and wisdom, wisdom has nothing to do with chaos. And chaos, it seems that chaos, the chaos of the world does not want anything to do with the wisdom of God. But the answer to man's problem 
is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Um, and notice, notice verse number 30, and this will be, uh, ver what, let's read verse 30 and maybe verse 31. But notice what he says. And again, he is, he's wrapping it up. He's wrapping the conversation up in this particular uh, sentence and paragraph structure. He says in verse 30, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us, what? Wisdom. Wisdom. That's the first word. And I want us to notice this verse. But of him are ye in Christ. Being in Christ is the only way to change your situation. Being in Christ is the only way to make you a better man. To be in Christ is the only way for you to become a better woman, a better boy, a, be a better girl. As a matter of fact, being in Christ and, and reckoning yourself to be in Christ is the only way that you're going to be able to deal with your uh, problem of, of addiction, whatever it is. It is being in Christ through faith that makes us uh, dead, our identification with him, we are dead with him. We died on Calvary with him. We are buried with him with all of the, the uh, attributes uh, of the old man. Uh, the idiosyncrasies of the old man uh, has been crucified with Christ. And we are raised in newness of life. That is the wisdom of God. If you want to know what the wisdom of God is, and if you're looking even for wisdom in your own life right now, the wisdom of God is, Jesus, is being in Christ. It says, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us not only wisdom, but being in Christ makes you righteous because there is no righteousness outside of Christ. Christ is my righteousness. When Thank God that when the Father looks at me, he don't see Jeff, he sees his son. We see wisdom, righteousness, and here you go, Brother Scott. Here's what we're trying to grasp in every day. He's our sanctification. He's the one that changes us. This is the wisdom of God. This is the only way. This is the only way. And I want you, I'm going to give you all both time to comment on this verse. But I think it's real important. The natural man, uh, uh, genealogy, uh, your family history does not necessarily produce good character. No. It is, if you, if you want to have good, you, you, no man is born with good character. Good character is built. Good character, or especially the character in which God recognizes, is built. It's not born. I know there's a lot of people take credit, I'm a good old boy, or he's a good old boy. He's a good man. That's a good woman. Let me tell you right now, they, there is none good. There's none that was born good. We are all as an unclean thing. We are all as filthy rags. The only goodness that comes along is the righteousness of Christ that's imputed to me by my faith. So we have wisdom in verse 30. We have righteousness in, in verse 30. We have sanctification in verse 30. But not least, we have redemption. And it is that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Everything you said right there, the, uh, is God has made into us the wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. <clears throat> like you said before, when you say, I... You done messed up. You've disqualified yourself when you say yeah. I. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Absolutely. You say, I need to I need to sanctify myself. I need to do this. We gotta rely on Christ. But uh you know all but God, everything we go through, if uh you know, somebody they, they think, well, if I wisdom, if I go through this twelve step program, mm -hmm. you know, get off addiction, God that word just settled. Can, God can change you overnight. That's right. I ain't saying people don't need things, uh, might need things like that, but you know, one touch from God uh, is can do more for you than a, a years or a lifetime with a psychiatrist. Amen. Amen. Because God, God's a chain breaker. He can, That's right. He can fix everything. He made your soul. He can fix. That's it, right. You know? Amen. So.
Praise God. Praise God. Brother Walt. You know, when we, we look at verse 30 here, we see that, you know, if we, if we put our faith in the finished work that Christ did on the cross, we have everything. We don't have just, you know, a lot of people look at the cross and, you know, and, and, and for salvation. That's, that's, that's true. Yes. But Jesus gives us everything. That's right. He gives us wisdom. He gives us righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. That's everything we need. That's right. And and whatever whatever it is that you need today, you can find it through Him. Amen. What He did on the cross. Amen. You can find it. Amen. Right there. You know that's that's that was wonderful, Walt, because it made me think. Within those four words, it's everything. that's everything humanity needs. Uh, absolutely. That is really everything that humanity is seeking. And it's yeah. all found in placing our faith Praise the Lord. in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's God's way. God's Amen. Way. Brother Walt, I, would you give, um, the last few minutes, would you give an invitation and uh, invite someone to, to trust in our Lord? You know, I don't, uh, uh, I don't, you know, somebody, somebody may be listening to the broadcast tonight. Maybe you are very successful, wealthy, or hold a high position. And we don't want you to uh, believe for a minute that you can't be saved. Oh, absolutely. So we don't want to misinform uh, sure. anybody sure. that, you know, uh, uh, you're just as uh, worthy as anybody that's uh, poor or humble. All you have to do is just... Come, Amen. Just come, and Amen. Jesus says in His Word, yes. uh, "Whosoever comes to Me, I will in no way cast Amen. away." Amen. So, so hey, I hope that it, if there's anybody out there, if you have, if you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you got something empty in your heart. And that can only be filled by the Lord Jesus Christ, and I and I ask that if if there's any out there, maybe maybe you believe that maybe you're uh, you think you're saved, but you're not sure. You know, you you can make things right tonight. You can you can be sure of your salvation by accepting. Uh, Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. And just, you believe that in your heart, and Jesus will come and live in your heart, and he'll, he'll give you the Holy Spirit. And, I, and I, I promise you, that Holy Spirit will lead and guide and direct your way. And, uh, and I pray that, hey, all you have to do is realize that you're lost and you need a Savior. And you just ask the Lord Jesus Christ for forgiveness of your sins and ask Him to come in your heart. And if you believe that in your heart, He will. Amen. He'll come in and He'll, and, and you'll have everything. You'll have everything you ever need. And, and this will be the greatest night of your life. Well, I got saved when I was 16 years old. That was the greatest day of my life. Amen. And I remember it just like it was yesterday. So, if, I'm, I may be speaking to ones out there who, who uh, is not sure that they actually has been saved because if you can't remember a time, that you that you did that, then you can make it sure tonight. Yeah. And uh, I'm just uh, I'm just gonna ask Pastor, if you wanna you wanna pray for him? Absolutely. And, and I'll be glad. And to. Uh, and <coughs> yes, 
Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, uh, Lord, for the touch and the Spirit of God that we've felt here tonight. Um, Lord, when we look at wisdom, and we think about all the times we've tried to figure life out and try to figure things out in our life, and we've, we've come to the conclusion that uh, we're just not wise enough to get it done. Lord, when we look to you and look to your wisdom, we have hope. And Father, I pray that as Brother Walt has, has invited, if there's one out there that uh, needs you or wants you or asks for you, uh, that you'll save them right now, and I know you will. Uh, that person don't need us, don't need anybody on this panel. They, don't, they certainly don't need the wisdom of this panel. All, of, all they need is, Lord, your wisdom, and your wisdom is Jesus Christ. Your wisdom is wrapped up in a man, in the man, Jesus Christ, and what he came to do. And Father God, I pray that you would just save someone right now, could change their life, change their heart. And Lord, we believe all of these things. And Lord, even if there's a Christian that is struggling, Lord, in their Christian walk, and they're trying to, trying to find out what God would have them to do, trying to find out what God would say to them. Father God, I remind them that your word is their wisdom and your work, Lord, is their wisdom. And if they will put their faith in you, uh, Lord, you'll send them the answer because your spirit works, Lord, within the... Uh, area of the finished work of Calvary. Lord, we see, Lord, we need your spirit. Lord, and I pray for that brother or sister that's discouraged, Lord, that they would look at Calvary and, Lord, they would embrace the Lamb, not, it, not religion, but embrace the Lamb of God that take, took away the sin of the world. Lord, bless them, Lord, and bless our viewers. Lord, uh, everything that's needed, Lord, in their lives, we pray for them. Lord, we love you and give you all the praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And I also wanted to uh, quickly, we've run out of time, but if you're watching uh, today and uh, you are interested in being a guest uh, on the panel, you're in the, the Gastonia area, whether you're a pastor uh, or a lay person, um, and you'd like to get in on this conversation concerning the cross uh, we pray that uh, you would con you can contact me. You can message me on Facebook. Again, my name's Jeff Williams. Um, we appreciate and would love to have you. Uh, and so until next week, with the Lord's help, uh, the Savior's Cross broadcast. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Amen.